Hey everyone and welcome to the first ever Ali Woods broadcast. Really appreciate you listening. So with these, I'm thinking I'm just missing doing a podcast to be honest. I'm just missing connecting with people. I'm missing hearing your stories. Those who listened to my last podcast with the father Tom himself, Tom Elwes, all I do is fail. They'll know that was really fun. It was a really good time. It ran its course. We, we couldn't keep it going. It wasn't getting cost efficient, but I'm missing hearing from people. I'm missing talking about myself, obviously. So I want to know what's going on with you. We're going to have a weekly catch up, send in your stories, send in your problems that you might need advice with, and then we can hang out and catch up. I'm recording this from my bedroom. This is it. I've got some kit. Who knows if it's any good? I've spent two hours already, <laughs> two hours trying to set up this DSLR camera plus the microphone that I've got with my laptop. I'm on forums. There was this person who on, <laughs> on one of these forums, this is after like an hour of like trying to search, why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? There's this person who wrote in this forum the exact issue I was facing, the exact issue. And I was like, perfect. Thank you so much. Read it. I was like, that's exactly what I want. Look down the answers. Nothing. <laughs> so we haven't sorted it. We haven't, but you know, all I can say is I hope you can listen to this. I hope you can hear it. The The camera's on. I don't know if I'm going to put this on YouTube or not. We'll see. But all I know is i got to just start, start doing this. I want to start building a little crew of people who want to catch up every week, man. I'm recording this from my bedroom Saturday midday. It's a bank holiday weekend. The best reason for living in the UK. Genuinely. Genuinely, I'm not sure you could pick a better reason for living in the UK than bank holidays right now. The weather's terrible. The government's non-existent. Everything is so expensive. But what we have over these other people, over these, these Americas of the world, is that now and then, Especially around spring, when the days are getting longer, they just go, you know what, take Monday off. <laughs> and everyone's like, why? Why should we Why should we do that? Is it, is it some sort of holiday? It's a bank holiday. What, what do you mean? The banks are going to be closed. So, yep. I don't think anyone can get to work if the banks are closed. <laughs> this is where living in the past... One of the few instances of this country living in the past actually helps us. What does the bank being closed have to do with anything? Who knows? But now we still celebrate it. We still celebrate. It's the same with like the Jubilees and the coronation. Of course, of course, I care so much about the new king. Please give me that day off. That's where we are. I did a little video on. Um, <laughs> I did a little video on a bank holiday weekend. And it was nice because I posted it and people, immediately people coming in the comments and the likes. Haha, love it. This is the best. You're the best. Genius once again, Ali. Okay, look, stop it, guys. I get it. But then eventually, and having done videos for a while now, this is what happens. Eventually, when a video becomes popular enough, it will reach people who don't agree with the video and don't like the video. And then I'm I'm looking at this video being like, man, it's getting so many comments, great engagement for me. I can only assume all the comments are just crying emojis, laughing emojis. Once again, he's the voice of a generation. No one's doing it like you, Ali. But I look in the comments and it's everyone going, unless your hospitality, unless your hospitality, unless your, <laughs> it's just, it's just like those damn office workers. Suddenly there's like a class war happening in my comments. You've got people working their corporate nine to fives being like, I deserve this holiday. I work so much harder than you. You've got people in hospitality. You don't know what it's like to actually work. You just sit around in a laptop sitting, working from home all day, not even working. And you know what I do in those situations? I leave it. Let them fight it out. I've had I've had messages in the past, Ali. You know you've, you you're not coming in on the comments. People are people are arguing. Fine, Let, I, if you are spending your day worried about a comment on social media, and I'm not talking about serious comments, death threats, stuff like that. I'm talking about someone just disagreeing with you. If you are doing that, if you're waking up in your day being like, I hope Musk Survivor four three two. 
has replied so I can best him again. Just leave it, man. Let it go. There's nature. There's love out there. You gotta find it. <laughs> you gotta don't be in your phones. You know, I had my um I had my first ever pile on this year. I don't know if I've ever properly talked about it on uh social media. But I had my first ever like pile on. If you don't know what a pile on is, it's basically when someone's put something out there on social media that is um inflammatory maybe in some way or has riled up a certain group of people and then a load of people that that group they just keep on piling on them with comments with nasty things with awful stuff comments messages and stuff i didn't get any dms thankfully but i did this video on what people outside of london think it's like living in london and just them talking about how like incredibly dangerous it is and how everyone's really rude. And you know what? It was the hyperbole was ramped up so much. You know, it was jokes like, uh, you know, no, there's not a single person from Britain living in London. And jokes like, you know, if, if, if you ask for the time, they kick your dog in the Thames. Just like s obviously silly stuff. Anyway, the right wing of Twitter got onto this, or X as it's known. The right wing got onto this. And they were just starting beefing me. They were just retweeting it. And I was again looking at it like, oh, this is doing so well. This is great. I'm so glad I get so many retweets. And it was just people retweeting it being like, least funny thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, and uh, one of these right wing journalists retweeted it. And she said, oh man, what did she say? It was something like, um, it was something <laughs> like, this is the sort of soy boy cuck. That finished top of his top that finishes top of his class in pussy studies, <laughs> which I, which I thought was actually hilarious. To be fair, I think that's actually very funny. Um, I retweeted that. That's the only one I replied to. I retweeted that saying like, I actually love pussy studies at uni. Uh, the oral was stressful though. This MP. I'm not talking about someone who wants to be an MP or someone who's working just in politics in general. This is a voted in member of parliament of the UK. He shared it saying, this guy is so unfunny and so unoriginal. I could see him having a great career on Channel 4. Which <laughs> is actually, to be fair, that is actually more supportive than my parents were when I started doing comedy. Well, no, it's a lie actually. My dad loved it, but he just liked the idea of me and him doing a travel show like Jack Whitehall. But who knows? Maybe that'd be a nice career on Channel Four. I don't know how they're doing, but it's uh, it's not looking great for telly. If you didn't know, the TV world is is struggling out there. The terrestrial TV uh, is there's not loads of money. But I got all this hate. And, um, you know, I always felt like what I was just saying there about not letting these things affect you doesn't matter. Like, in fairness, that was the first time where I started feeling like, okay, this is actually getting stressful. I was worried about uh, opening the app. And then I was actually recording some videos with Josh Berry. If you know my channel, you know I've done some stuff with Josh Berry. Very funny guy, very lovely guy, very tall guy, annoyingly. I'm not a short man. You know, I'm six foot four, minus four. I am... I am all right, but he is too tall. So when we do sketches, we have to stand next to each other. I don't like that. I think it's abuse in the in the workplace. I went over to his and he recommended this podcast by John Ronson, which is called um, So You've Been Publicly Shamed, I think is the name of it. It's an audio book, so it's a book, and they've done an audio book of it. So he just reads out some sort of excerpts from it. Listen to that. And... In that, he says a very good, astute point, which is like, um, uh, the internet is not real life. And I listened to that, and I just, on my phone, I just deleted X. I just deleted it. And I just felt like, oh yeah, it's all good. <laughs> it's fine. Suddenly, I was just looking up at the birds, and I was walking, breathing in the beautiful fresh air, and I wasn't as worried anymore. It was an incredible thing. And then I left it a few days. And then eventually 
I downloaded the app again because I want to keep posting on. I don't want to just be warded off this thing. And I was a bit worried. I'm like, oh, maybe they're, maybe they're still, maybe I'm going to work up to loads of messages saying you're a prick. One guy, before I deleted the app, I saw this guy who his reply to that video was, I hope he gets acid thrown in his face. And the only witness is a tracksuit wearing hoodie. That's what he said. <laughs> I was worried those people were going to be in my DMs and all that. But I just re-downloaded the app. Nothing. I guess they just moved on to someone else. I had no DMs. I just had the quotes and replies. That had already happened. And that was it. And it was fine. And unfortunately, that obviously, that sort of stuff doesn't escalate. Obviously, I also didn't get involved. And I personally don't think the, that video was too inflammatory. But... That is what I would suggest to anyone here. Anyone going long-winded way round from my bank holiday video. I would suggest to anyone who struggling, beefing with people in comments of videos or, or, or feeling, maybe even feeling bad about your life. You know, you're opening an app and you're just seeing everyone else doing things that you think you should be doing. The internet is not real life. You can always just delete it. You can just go about your day. What I try and do, I've not been actually good at this recently, but what I try and do is I try to, um, in the morning when I wake up, leave my phone on airplane mode. It's on airplane mode overnight. I don't care. If people need to call me, you're done. I'm sorry. I'm not going to pick up. Apologies. That's what me, me and my ex had to talk about that at one point. <laughs> But I'm in airplane mode. My sleep is sacred. Airplane mode. And when I wake up, I try and leave my phone on airplane mode for an hour. Because that morning is just so important. I mean, it's just... Because if you just wake up and immediately go on your phone, that stimulation is just so high first thing in the morning, first thing in, the, in your day. And also you can be wake up, you can see a beautiful blue sky, you can be looking forward to the day. You get off airplane mode, you open your app, you see a picture of your ex... You see someone buying a house. You see someone announcing their engagement, and you're single. You know, you can see all this, and it can just and it can just make you in a bad mood in the start. I feel that. I feel that sometimes, man. Sometimes I feel like my career is going well. I'm, re I'm really excelling. I'm feeling really happy with it. I open the app. I see a fellow, a colleague, another comedian, another sketch maker, who's got a bajillion more followers as of the last week or month. I'm looking at mine, I'm like, oh, why am I so stagnate? Why am I stagnating? Why am I not like them? And then even though I'm having a great day, like this this generally happened to me yesterday. Yesterday, I was filming for the stand-up sketch show. Now, this is a TV show on ITV2. The catchphrase of it is, it's on after Love Island. That's not the official catchphrase, but that's basically the, the, the plan. It's got, it's in its sixth season, it's done really well because of that, because it's on after Love Island, and it's really fun, just concept where, uh, you know, someone does stand up and then they actually act out the, the story in the stand up. I, this is sixth season, I've been fortunate enough that I was asked to be on it this year. Now, I've seen a lot of colleagues and friends go on it and happy for them. At the same time, I'm just like, oh, I'm never going to get on one of those because, you know, I don't have, I don't have the right agent or whatever because a lot of these are done through agents. They didn't go through an agent at all. They just messaged me directly, messaged me directly. And that was a real boon on my part of like hard work paying off of, you know, if you, you sit there, you wear your wigs and you do your voices and you make sketches that hopefully people watch, then you get invited onto those things that before you would have been never invited on. You know, five seasons I watch people go on it, my colleagues, my peers, and I was never close. And then this year they were like, yes, messaged me directly. It was lovely. It was the first time I've ever, so you go and do the stand-up, you, you do the stand-up, and that was my second time on TV doing stand-up. I did Comedy Central as well last year. I don't mean to brag. Uh, Comedy Central UK, I might say, which I was... I was not happy with how I did on that. That was really fun. I was really glad I did it. Again, they came to me directly, which was lovely. But you know what it was? There's a saying in football where it's like, you play the occasion, not the game. 
And so that's when you have a cup final and someone's like a bit too hyped. They're a bit too amped. They're rushing their passes. They're not got a good touch. They're flying into tackles, picking up yellow cards, uh, giving away fouls because they're just too hyped. You've got to be relaxed. And in that one, it was like a month after my breakup. And I was like, right, I'm going to do all new material about the breakup. That's me. That's that's how good I am. I'm just going to show them. I'm going to, show, in a way, probably show my ex as well, who works in comedy. Just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm moving on. I'm doing this, you know. And and then, yeah, it just it just meant that, like, it, you know, the, the, I wasn't used to a TV recording. I was working out in the clubs. I was working out that material in the clubs. It was going well in the clubs. I was getting good laughs. And so I was like, right, I'm going to go smash it. I got moved from a nice position. I was going to be a fourth in the first half, which is a good position to be in. Then I was second last on what was a very long night, very long, warm room. And I just went on trying to smash it. And it's just not like that, man. People are spread out. There's a lot of industry and they're not the most fun laughers because they're just working, they're looking at and they and they want their act to do well. So they're laughing hard at their acts and they're sort of just looking at the other acts being like, hmm, could we do something with them, you know? Um, and so I wasn't like, I wasn't as, as, as on it. Um, but then when this one came around, I was a more, lot more chilled. I was like, right, okay, I've done a TV thing before I've done stand up on TV I realize now what it is you just got to perform to the cameras because no one at home is going to be wondering how it's going in the room because it's going to look good in the room regardless they're going to change it so they're going to make it look good in the room regardless and so it's just more about performing confidently showing that you're relaxed performing as well as you can so the people at home watching it on their on their phones will think oh this guy's really good um, so that was one where the second time I did that, that when I did that stand up sketch show, when I did the stand up for it, I was relaxed. I was on fourth in the first half. It was a good position. Um, and I was just went on, had a great time. And then when it came to actually filming the sketch part of it, I was incredible. It was just amazing because it's the first time I was looking at these people like that person's operating the camera, that person's working out the lighting, that person's working out the sound, this person's just running, helping with little bits and bobs, everything. And I was looking at all these people. I'm like, they're all here making my stand-up. They've all been, they've all got a paycheck because of what I've written. They, they're they doing that. They're making that happen. And that was the first time it's ever happened for me. It was an incredible feeling. I've never had that before in my life. I was looking, I was like, I can't believe this. It was so exciting. I always, in those moments, try to appreciate it, that if, like, the 13-year-old Ali would have been able to, like, know that this was going to happen, he would have been so gassed, man. It's, it's amazing. Um, so, yeah, that was that was pretty great. But I was doing that yesterday, and I was doing the second sketch of, of doing it. It's really fun. Like, it's an early start. But everyone who does it is really nice. They're really friendly. Also, like, you're, like, the, the quote-unquote talent. So it's just, like... It's just like so nice, like people are really like nice to you and you get to basically just have fun with them while they're like working really hard to make your stuff happen. You're just there like having a laugh really. Um, so big up to them, Stand Up Sketch and Spirit Studios. And I did that in the day and then I went back in the afternoon, had like a writing session about my show and then I was, um, and then I was on my way to the gig. I was doing a gig in, in Aylesbury last night which I've never done a gig in, and it was like a nice theatre, like, I don't know, like a 200 seat or something like that, uh, almost full, you know, it wasn't my own show, I was just doing like a club gig, and um, and just before I went on, I opened Instagram, and I saw like a colleague, another another um, person who, who does comedy, and I was like, oh, I haven't seen them pop up for a while on my Instagram, I'll like have a look at how they're doing, and just check their followers, and they got like way more followers than me now, and they never used to, and I was like, oh man, and I was about to go on and I was like, oh, I was like, why is that getting in my head? I'm not even like, I'm not jealous of that person. It's so exciting for that person. Like, they're really nice. I've, I've worked with them before. But it's just like those moments can just throw you off. And I went on stage and I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't I wasn't in the mood. I wasn't happy as, as, as I should be. I wasn't excited as I should be. I was just, I was in my own head. Why can't I do it? What can I do in that, in that situation? Um, so all I'll say is, Social media is not real life. Appreciate what's going on in your life at the moment and don't worry so much. Don't worry about it as much, man. It's just not worth it. I had a good week as well, to be fair, career-wise. I'm a bit worried about myself, to be honest, guy, with you. I don't know how you're doing, but I feel like I'm just doubling down on, on work right now. 
and that's good you know the comedy's going well i'm getting lots of gigs i'm making more sketches than i've ever made i haven't probably made this many sketches this many sketches regularly since the pandemic probably since covid so that's like awesome to be doing that but um but yeah i uh i I just worry that i don't have as much of the the other parts of life man like i mean me and my ex broke up like what is it now eight months ago so it's a good while now and i was after that i was doing a bit of the sort of casual stuff i was just like um seeing people and we were agreeing like you know neither of us want anything serious it's just having a bit of fun you know and just it's nice and and that was good and and certainly the way it sort of ended with my ex i think i needed that i needed that boost i need my self confidence my self worth to to increase i don't know if you've had a breakup or how it's gone but i think the way our breakup happened i definitely felt like i was sort of getting that I didn't have a lot to offer at the end of that. And so those people who afterwards sort of helped me, and hopefully I helped them, I don't know, but they they helped me for sure build up that self-worth and that self-confidence. I really, I really appreciate them a lot. But then after a while you've had a bit of the casual stuff and the situationship stuff and and then I was like right I think I actually don't want to do this anymore what changed was I think me going to New York I think going to New York helped me put my put in perspective my I went out there for 10 days in January and and it's again that's a dream I've always had was like to go and do stand up and live in New York as a dream I had and I went out there and I loved it I don't know if you've been to New York but I loved it I mean I think it takes a certain type of person to go but I just had the best time and it made me think right I want to move here and then I thought as well like okay what do I want out of my life what do I want and there was people because you know how these situationships go man like it's fun it's exciting and you know you can be like really like satisfied sexually or, or just like in terms of just being frivolous just having a fun time you know but after a while someone's getting more into it especially if it doesn't have a deadline like someone's not moving like fair enough if you're leaving the country in two months or something like that but but someone gets more attached or someone wants more someone's more happy than the other like there's always that imbalance i think in any situation i've been in like someone is enjoying it more than the other person and someone wants more than the other person and that might be minimal but I think uh, I think as the longer the situation ship goes on, the the more that expands and that that chasm grows. So I would say that to anyone who might be in that situation at the moment, where they're sort of doing like a quote unquote, it's just fun and casual, but there's feelings developing. Like there's no point pushing them down. And I feel like as well, as soon as you are putting off other people. You're rejecting dates. You're going on nights out thinking, well, I don't need to meet anyone here. Or I don't want to meet anyone here because I've already got someone else. Alarm bells should be ringing. Because at that point, you are basically investing a lot in this supposedly casual thing. It's not casual anymore. I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry to tell you at that point, it's not casual anymore. And someone's going to get hurt. It might be you, might be them. Someone's going to get hurt. So just talk about this thing. You might develop into a relationship, but if you never talk about that, then it won't. And then you'll just get hurt. So I did a bit of that and that was fun. And then, but then after after I sort of came back from New York, I was like, right, I just don't really want to do that stuff anymore. So now I feel like about the period where I'm either going to have like a sort of random hookup with someone, like a complete random hookup or, or, or like actually date, like date with intention, you know. But then that's tricky. It's tricky. I don't know how you find it, how busy you are, where you prioritize stuff. But for me, like comedy is, it comes first so much in my life. And I say that to people that I date. I say that it's like I already have a girlfriend. <laughs> which, which they don't like. They don't like that. But it is. It's like comedy for me is like someone who, 
It's like I'm thinking about them all the time. Spend every evening with them pretty much. People are like, oh, should we go for dinner Thursday night? I'm like, I'm gigging. Okay, what what Friday? It's your Friday night? I'm gigging. Okay, well, what about next week? I'm gigging. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry to tell you, but that is the nature of it. And so at the moment, I've basically just said to myself, right, give up. <laughs> give up on that romantic side of your life. And just go for, go full hard on the comedy. Just go double down. Just get into it. And that's sort of what I'm doing. But then also, then I think, you know, I do miss that. I miss, I think it's a wonderful thing being able to share your life with someone and having someone you can rely on and trust, who makes you feel better about what you're doing, who has your back, your team. It's, it's a wonderful thing. I had that for the first time with my ex. I've never had that before. And so I would not say to anyone oh there's no point looking for that just focus on your career because I think that's a beautiful thing but it is hard it is a hard thing to find and there's some people who prioritize their relationships there's some people you know them the serial monogamous never been single for more than a year they have to be having someone they have to find someone to text all the time they have to find someone to listen to their problems to to go on walks with them do stuff with them because they can't be comfortable alone you don't want to be one of those type of people either I think it's good to do both because to be fair with me, I was too much the other side. Until I was 28, I'd never been in a relationship that was longer than three months. And I wouldn't recommend that either. <laughs> People start giving you some looks. They're judgmental. And look, you know what? Fair enough. They're fa Fair enough. They're judgmental because they're, they're thinking, well, 28 years, how have you not been able to make a human connection with someone <laughs> after 28 years? But to be fair, I mean, a lot of that was down to down to my decision I was going to focus on comedy and then I had to have a day job to to fund that and it was only when I went down to three day weeks at work where I thought okay there might be now time in my life to to date someone to to actually see someone with a bit more um I don't know honesty but now I've sacked that off <laughs> I've sacked that off so now, I'm just going to go full isolated comedy. And hopefully something will happen. But who knows, man? Who knows? Maybe I, maybe I look younger anyway because I had to go clean shaven for this recording. So I've had to... As my first ever wet shave, I've never, done, I've never done one before. It was so embarrassing. I'm 30 years old. I'm 30 years old and I get back from a gig... I've got to do this wet shave for the first time ever. I've gone early in the day to buy the products for it. I'm not even sure if I've got the right products. And then I'm in the bathroom. I literally YouTube. I'm 30, by the way. 30 years old. I YouTube. I, I, I search in the YouTube bar. Um, how to do a wet shave. <laughs> no idea. And so this guy pops up. He's got like 4 million subscribers. And he's just like the internet's dad. And he's just like your dad. And he, the, 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 the channel's called something like, Ask Me I'm a Dad or something like that. And he's literally just set up the camera. It's like his phone in the corner of the room. This video has like 2 million views, by the way. It's just his phone. And he just for four minutes is like, right, here's how you do it, guys. Um, and it's like no production, no lighting, no nothing. And it was sick. It was perfect. It was just what I needed. <laughs> so I literally followed him. I was pausing. I was like, okay, okay, wash it off now. Put it over there. Okay, okay, do that, that. And it literally, I just did it for the first time with, with the internet's dad in the corner. So big up to you, my friend. Big up to you. Because thank you so much because I had to do that. So now I'm looking fresh faced. And I'll tell you what, it does take some years off, man. You know what? I think there's like a period like, I think maybe with guys, a lot of guys, they want to look like maybe maybe 27. Maybe that's like peak, that what, what guys want to look like. And so when you're sort of 16 plus, you're like, I need to get some facial hair. I need to look cool. I need to look good, you know. But then after 27... Maybe it's a case of you need to get a fresh face just so that people think you look younger. I don't know, man. Maybe I need to do a poll on the on, on my socials and just be like, well, get get an answer for finally where people are going to go, right, you look better with a beard or without a beard because honestly, I don't know. I don't know at this point. But we'll have to look. We'll have to see what happens. Right. This has been the first episode of the Alleywoods broadcast. And 
I want to say thank you so much. If you're listening to this bit, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you. What we're going to do is we're going to have, I think we're going to have uh, the full episode, um, maybe on a Patreon, and then this episode's with, 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 and then, you know, maybe shorter episodes just available for free. We'll, we'll, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see. We'll see. But I want to say thank you. If you've got anything you want me to talk about, then please message in. Message me on my socials, Ali Woods Gigs. And also, I think what I'm going to do is maybe start some sections where it's like messaging in your problems, messaging in what you're dealing with right now. So maybe we can discuss that because I always like doing that on the last podcast. I think it was I think it was really fun. And look, I don't know if I'm going to give serious answers or joke answers. We'll decide later. But until then, look, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for listening to this. I'll see you next week. And take care. Look after yourself. You're doing well. Okay? You're doing well. See you soon.